Hello, I'm Alan Furstenberg. And I'm Mark Tucker, and we are Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. So I want to welcome everybody to what's really a kind of special and kind of different episode for us. Um, so for those who are, are listening or watching the recording later, this was recorded live, uh, both via Zoom and via Twitter space. And we have a uh, collection of people who have joined us today. And what we're going to be doing is um, inviting people to ask us questions for this. Our, hey, Mark, can you believe it? It is our 75th episode. Woohoo, 75. <laughs> no, I can't I, believe it. <laughs> I can't either. You know, it really seems like it was only, you know, like last month that we, we got through episode 50. Yeah. And we're amazed at that. Um, and I still remember episode 10. <laughs> Yeah, what a crazy idea we had all the way back, uh, I don't know how long ago. What month did we actually start? <laughs> uh, it, was, it was, I don't know exactly. It was, the middle of, it was the middle of the year. So, you know, it was a crazy idea we had 75 weeks ago. Somebody else can do the math. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, it, is, it has really been fun. And I'm really looking forward to, um, as part of this episode, having people ask us the questions that we keep forgetting to ask each other. So... Um, We've got a, a small group here. I'm, I'm really glad that people have joined us this, uh, this evening for us. You know, I know some of, the, some of the people who are joining us are in very, very different time zones. Um, so again, I will ask the, uh, first I'll remind the crowd that we are recording, hopefully. Um, and I will ask that if you have a question to somehow indicate to us that you wish to ask the question and we will invite you up as a speaker. So, uh, this, uh, hopefully this will be a, a really fun time. Um, how, how have your holidays been so far, Mark? They've been uh, very nice, actually. Just uh, kind of low-key, just our family. Our oldest uh, son came from out of state, and so now everybody's back together again. And um, just hanging around, playing games, uh, watching some of our family favorite movies, and uh, that's, that's what we got going. Fantastic. Always good. For me, it's been a a nice, somewhat relaxing <laughs> couple of weeks. I'm looking forward to it being a little more relaxing and, and uh, filling around with some new technology and, and so forth. So I see Zavi has a question. Let me uh, invite to speak. Okay, so welcome up, Zavi. You can, uh, you can unmute yourself and uh, feel free to ask. Hi there. Hello, hello. Hello from Spain. Hey. <laughs> Thanks for... Uh, yeah, for, for this opportunity. Um, my question is, since I think this is the last episode from 2021, um, <clears throat> my question is, uh, what do you expect in terms of uh, the boys, boys first uh, for 2022? Oh, do you want to take that first, Alan? Or? So, so the question is, what do we expect in, in the voice and voice first and audio space in... 2022. Yeah, that is a fantastic question. Um, I'm I'm kind of divided on this. So from a developer point of view, I'm really not expecting all that much. Um, on the Google side, you know, there is a lot of stuff that's in the pipeline that they've talked about being in the pipeline. Um, some changes for uh, app actions on Android. Uh, some changes for Interactive Canvas, all of which are, are really fantastic looking. Um, but they've been in a pipeline for a while. So I, you know, I imagine we will see them at some point in 2022, but they're not really new. Um, they've also promised some changes, some, some desperately needed upgrades to the monetization flow. Um, but they've been promising that for over a year at this point. So... I don't know. Um, I, I'm hoping we'll see that as well. I'm also really hoping we see some genuinely new and unique stuff. So, you know, really pushing the boundaries on things that will help us make better skills and actions, um, get the word out about those skills and actions, and really do some things in just ways that everyone wants, but we never quite seem to get there. You know, what are your thoughts, Mark? 
Oh, I, I agree that there's probably just fulfilling different promises that they've uh, made or things that have been in preview uh, from this year going into next year. Um, I do see some, maybe some bigger things. Um, widgets is going to be interesting with the um, Echo Show 15, and they're going to bring that to additional devices. So um, you know, I'm sitting here with my uh, Echo Show version 2 um, you know, sitting right next to me and figuring out um, how to get widgets on there. And, and then also as a developer, how do I create widgets? So that's something. There's also been a hint that there is going to be more integration into the world of auto. There, you know, there was the Echo Auto uh, device that came out a number of years ago. Uh, but this is like a tighter integration that includes APL screens um, seems like it's been hinted at. We'll see uh, if that comes into fruition in uh, 2022. Yeah, so that seems interesting. You know, I think one of the things from the Voice Summit that, that recently, recently concluded is we saw a lot of the speakers, several of the speakers talking about how voice really needs to grow up and mature and, and really do some big, bold things to get out there. Um, and I'm not sure we're going to see that actually come to fruition in 2022. I think we may may see some hints about it, but I don't think there's going to be a huge leap forward. Yeah, some of the things that we're doing at Rain is actually you know stepping beyond the Amazon Alexa, Google Assistant, um, you know Bixby uh, world and creating you know adding voice to existing web and mobile apps um, or creating custom assistants. Um, so that's some stuff that we're working on and that we're seeing. Um, more and more interest in as we work with our clients. Yeah, that makes sense. I think we'll hopefully we'll actually see some, um, you know, clear. You know, we're we're even see some libraries now, like Speak to Web, that are doing that integration. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I I think you're right. I think we'll see more of that as well. Does that answer your question. And any you have any further thoughts on that one, uh, Zavi? Yeah, that uh, totally answers my question. My expectation is. Um is uh, to have like all the features that are that have been presented like on the Alexa Live or on the uh, Google I.O. or something like that um, to be available globally, not only in in the U.S. or local English uh, as a Spanish, that would be awesome to be uh, available all the features uh, here in in Spanish and well, I mean, in in all the locales and countries. You know, I, I I think you actually raised a really good point, and it's something that I think Mark and I we really need to to talk about more is exactly what does uh, the internationalization and the locale support really look like. Um, I'm not sure how much more of that we're going to see. You know, Google likes talking about it, but th we don't see too much actually happening there. Um, and I think Alexa did. Did I remember correctly? Alexa just announced a new locale for skills. Oh, they did. Um, what do I want to say? It's Arabic. I think it's Arabic. I think you're right. Yeah. So, so, so yeah. that's that, that's but a pretty big thing. So, okay. Thanks so much for the question. Um, Thanks, Abby. Noble. Hey, everyone. Uh, Alan, Mark, uh, thanks for having me. Really quick question. And just, you know, we're wrapping up 2021. Uh, what's one key, just open, open-ended open -ended question, like what's one key learning that uh, you have gotten that you can impart uh, upon this group? Oh, um, yeah, I'll start. I, I've spent a lot of time um, in APL, Alexa Presentation Language, this last year where I hadn't been. Um, you know, early on, you know, years ago, um, five years ago, whatever, when I got started and uh, display templates first came out. So with the very first Echo Show, really got into screen design there. Well, as much as you could, it was more filling out JSON values that would then show up on a screen, but really tried to push that um, as far as it could go. And then when APL came out, there was just a, a number of challenges that you know, I hit different roadblocks and early on, testing it and, and some different challenges, uh, but really have gotten into APL and, you know, did a video series and 
just kind of playing around with creating my own custom controls. And it's actually more approachable than I thought it was. You know, when I first hit, uh, started learning it, it, it had some challenges and I kind of took that bias into this year thinking, oh, I don't really want to learn APL. Um, you know, it's just kind of going to be a big pain. But um, I actually started enjoying it. Um, and uh, it, it's, it's not as uh, challenging as, as I thought it was. Uh, just take it in small bites. I think the biggest takeaway that I have from 2021 really is, I mean, it's something I feel like I always do and especially always seem to know as I, as I with Google is to be prepared for constant, constant change. Um, you know, there's, there's always something new coming around the corner. There's always a need to adapt. And especially with, with something this new, I mean, voice is still amazingly new, even though the assistant's been around for five years and Alexa's been around for seven. Did I get that right? Ooh, yeah, I'd have to go it's back like and look at it. But... There's, it still feels really early. And there's still a lot of changes that are constantly happening. So I feel like I need to be more prepared. You know, I, I think my takeaway from 2021 is needing to be more and more prepared for those changes as they come and you know be open-minded because things things that worked yesterday may still work or may not but <laughs> tomorrow but tomorrow there will almost definitely be a new way of doing it and you know i need to adapt to that um i think more broadly you know one of the things 2021 really has reinforced however, for me, is the importance of uh, networking and, and keeping communication lines open with people who are important to me. And that, you know, on one hand, that's, that's my family. That's, you know, people who are, are closest to me, making sure I am communicating with them. And it's people that I like working with professionally. It's, it's keeping the line, you know, being able to talk to Mark multiple times during the week. It's being part of Voice Lunch. It, you know, not even any specific topic, just being able to talk with people has felt really, really important as part of the, the overall learning process. Yeah. And on the, on the non-technical side, just kind of to continue that thought, um, just, you know, realize this has been a very challenging last two years. And, you know, people are in some cases hanging on and there's good days and there's bad days and, uh, you know, try to cut some people people some slack if they you know don't seem like they're at their best on any given day, but also be willing to reach out and just check in. There's been times where uh, Ellen just pops me a, <laughs> a message and saying, everything okay today? And I'm like, yeah, it's just kind of a bad day, but I'm okay. But it, it really does help to have somebody just checking in. Yeah, you know, and I agree. You know, one of the, one of the great things about things like Twitter is that you can feel free to just, you know, kind of express a, eh, it's one of those days and that's okay. You know, it's okay to have one of those days and it's okay for people to, to ask how you're doing and for you to say, it's just one of those days. Yeah. Um, so again, folks, I see we've gotten a, a couple of uh, new folks joining us. If you want to ask a question, um, either try to get my attention or apparently Noble's figured out the way to, to request being a speaker. So the feature is somewhere in there. I don't know where. Oop, somebody's, we now have two more requests. So um, oh, good. We'll get to that. Okay. Always, always good to see when we've got people asking. So again, uh, to those of you who have recently joined us, this is being recorded um, and we do welcome your questions. So Jackie, uh, good to see you. Thanks for joining. Hi. Happy 75th episode. This is so exciting. Thank you, Jackie. I noticed you have a uh, Brazil flag. Yes. My father is right, from right. Brazil. All right. Well, bom dia. Bom dia. Boa noite. Here. <laughs> yeah, <I> see. <laughs> é verdade. <laughs> ah, fala português. Que legal. <laughs> oh, um pouco. Faz muitos anos. Wow. Uh, that's so cool. I am so not looking forward to seeing what the, the transcription software does. <laughs> you just wait. <laughs> so following along or tagging along into the new year trend, I'm curious to know if um, what 
either of you are really excited to work on personally in terms of voice projects. Is there anything that you've been thinking like, you know, this is the year that I'm going to start doing or that I'm going to start building X or I'm going to work on, you know, that project that I had put away. Is there anything voice related that's in the hopper for both of you outside of your everyday jobs? Mm, There are definitely improvements to um, Snatch Word that I keep wanting to get back to that I haven't. Uh, So that's that's one of the games I've created. But one of the projects I'm interested in, um, I haven't really tried to do um, a mobile app in quite a long time. Um, And there is uh, like AWS, I think it's called um, AppSync or um, that there's supposed to be some some, uh, changes there to make that easier. I'm wanting to uh, tie in a mobile experience uh, into a skill um, somehow. Um, so that's kind of something that I've I've got on my list to to look into this next year. And and people can't see me nodding, but I have been through all of that because top on my list as well is to um, dive into app actions and shortcuts and uh, widgets and see how they're going to be playing with voice, and really just you know kind of explore that space, which is not a space I've done a lot with. So I'm really looking forward to. Um, to kind of fiddling around with that. Uh, in terms of other projects, I've got a game that I'm working on and uh, we'll see where it goes. I'm, I'm pretty excited about it. I'm having a lot of fun making it, that's for sure. <laughs> and, we'll see, and we'll see how it goes as a, as a voice action. Um, and maybe even see if I can make it a skill as well. So I'm looking forward to that. Um, I'm definitely looking forward to Interactive Canvas. The, the new new features for interactive canvas are very exciting. I'm really curious to see how they play out. And then finally, this is where I get to make my plug for multivocal. I am really looking forward to getting multivocal working with Alexa as well, um, possibly with some other technologies too. So yeah, it's a big plate, but 2022 is a long year. Um, <laughs> so uh, hopefully I'll get to, to some of that during that time. Let me ask you, Jackie, what, what are you excited is, about working well, on? Well, I was just going to ask, is Voodoo Drive on that list? Updates uh, to Voodoo Drive? <clears throat> I, yes, Voodoo Drive is on that list. I would, I would love to. Um, I probably desperately need to. Uh, for a lot of reasons. Um, it is one of my favorite projects that I've worked on. And I don't, I don't give it as much love as I really should. So, yeah, hopefully I'll find some time for Voodoo Drive as well. Um, awesome. Well, I hope we get to see all of these cool things on Two Voice Devs video style. Oh, that would be cool. Yeah. You, you can be sure that we will be talking about them as, you know, as, as we have in the past, as we tackle our project. We love talking about it. Let, let me ask you something, though, Jackie. What, what are you looking forward to trying out in the next year? What's, what's your goal in voice? What's my goal? I don't know what my goal in voice this coming year is. I think right, it is really to, I think, um, take a lot more action and experiment a lot more. I, I've done a lot of, I guess, study or a lot more lurking and a lot more kind of learning and not really doing as much hands-on, except for the stuff that I've been doing with um, vocal ID and the synthetic voice kind of things um, with the machine learning and stuff. And that's been really exciting for me. I've been learning a lot, but I do want to try my hand at the, um, the different skills and maybe create one for the first time. Cause I've never done that. Um, but I, I was asking about Voodoo drive really because I'm interested in the interface between voice and databases um, in particular. And so um I'm Voodoo Drive was the first thing that came to mind for me in terms of being able to start with that. But if you have any thoughts to, you know, of other things or something that furthers that along, I'm really interested in how to use data science as it relates to voice and databases as it relates to being able to extract data and put in data into databases. So databases, data analysis, both input and extract. You have, yes, you any, please, and thank you. Do you have any immediate thoughts on I mean, we that will definitely be 
uh, a segment all to a segment or two all to itself. You have any you have any initial thoughts on it, Mark? No, I just know that um, for getting started, um, I've done in, you know instead of a like a SQL database or a, even a DynamoDB, I've I've used Excel spreadsheets before as data. I've used um, Airtable. Um, mm -hmm. If it's something that you're going to do searching, you might try something like Algolia, um, or um, if you're kind of more just interested in content management, uh, Sanity IO has a good uh, content management system. You've done voice with with like the SQL. I haven't actually done SQL. I haven't done SQL for a long time since I've uh, got into voice. Uh, it seems like uh, NoSQL is a lot easier uh, to get into and to to merge up with what what I've been doing with uh, with voice. I, I do have to say I have done SQL with voice. In fact, the, the two voice devs action is built on top of um, MySQL and their, their full text indexing system. Oh, cool. Um, so uh, we, can, we can talk a little bit more at some point about exactly how we do that. But that, that was interesting, integrating both voice queries with, uh, with that full text search. And yeah. there, are, there are systems out there that are doing some really, really nifty stuff with that now. I was not doing nifty stuff. I was mostly just trying to prove that it worked. Um, but, you know, it certainly works. It works reasonably well. At least I think it works reasonably well. Hey, I just wanted to add on my list. It's been a while since, you know, the new version of Jovo has come out. And I haven't circled back around and, and tried that out yet. And it's always been in the back of my uh, mind to, I've already added some plugins for Jovo version three. So some of those would need to be rewritten for uh, version four, but I've, um, I've got a number of different, um, I guess, tools that I've used for some of the different games. And I was uh, thinking about coming up with a, like a game pack plugin, things that would help you integrate in with like a leaderboard um, or you know, like counters or, you know, different things um, with, with the game pack um, for, for Jovo 4. No, excellent point. You know, I, I think we do need to start, uh, it, it'll be really interesting to see what some of the other tools out there are doing and how they're, they're going. So that's something, uh, you're right, I should play more with it. I should get more into Jovo myself, um, but also look at some of the tools like VoiceFlow and some of the others just to, mm -hmm. to see how they're working and how they're doing. Thanks, Jackie. Thank you and happy new year. Yeah, happy, happy new year. year. Those of you that are just joining us, we see I see some new faces again, uh, some familiar but new faces. So, again, we're thrilled to have you here. Thanks for joining us. We are recording this. Hopefully, so hopefully this will be uh, immortalized as part of episode seventy-five on Two Voice Devs. If you've got questions for us, and what fun is it if you don't? Uh, we we do invite you to request to be a speaker, and assuming I hit the right button, and assuming you don't disappear like Lee just did. Oh man! Uh, we'll, yeah, I know. Um, I was, was going to ask him where he was. <laughs> so so assuming we can get you up here to ask questions, we will try to get you up to ask questions because we we love questions. Um, and that's actually let me let me say this. One of the things that I think both of us really enjoy about doing two voice devs is the input that we get from you uh, about new topics and things to make sure we talk about. And we really do take your suggestions and requests to heart. So thank you everyone who's who's uh, out of band sent us questions and who have uh, encouraged us as part of this. Um, Janice. Thank yeah. you so much. Hey, hey, hey. Hey, welcome, Janice. <laughs> Good to see you. You know, I've been puzzling lately um, how to uh, put together some interesting uh, uh, panels. You know, in my near future, I'm going to be doing that a little bit. I'm consulting with Pete Erickson on a few things now. So very excited uh, about that. And I would, I'm very curious. You see, I have an appointment this week to chat with, um, you know, Scoble, right? The Scobalizer. And we're going to mm -hmm. chat about um, voice and the metaverse. And he's doing the augmented reality. Where are you with, like, games? Mark, do you do gaming, uh, you know, programming? Are you looking into any of that? 
So I do do some gaming, and it's, it's all been voice gaming. Um, I haven't got into augmented reality, though I find it very interesting. So I just haven't found the thing that, that you know, quite, um, you know, gets me into it. We, I do have a, a, a VR headset at home, but then it's this, this big production about Nobody getting wants the, headsets. Nobody the, wants the computer set up, yeah. And so, so yeah, so I, I like VR. Um, I've done some, you know, I'm, I'm very average <laughs> on Beat Saber, Let's but I enjoy it quite a bit. Uh, so, but no, I haven't done anything in it, but I am interested in learning more about it. I mean, that would be awesome. You know, there are some great, uh, wonderful things that people need that you could look into. Mark, you're a good, uh, uh, as t Dr. Terry Fisher would say, you're a warm heart. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Hey, I see John, JT's here, speaking of warm hearts, our, uh, my fellow uh, uh, Open Voice Network uh, ethical use guy. Anyway, thanks so much. Good luck. Great show. Yeah, hey, give us the information on, uh, on your uh, meeting with Scobalizer this, this week. We'd like to, to know when it's going to get released. You know, I would love to have him come join us for a voice launch. Wouldn't that be fun? That would be. Like, let's do that. He's a nice guy, you know, I guess. I don't really know. But I've been following his work for many years, I, since I was a computer book editor, many moons ago. And I thought, well, why shouldn't he know what I'm doing? And maybe we could talk about what we're doing. So, and that's, you know, I'm just trying to, like, find my way along to do things like that, make phone calls and talk to humans, um, you know. I know Jackie's laughing. She's crying. She's <laughs> laughing so hard. Mwah. All right, everybody, I'm, I'll do my best. Take Thank care. You. you know, what, 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 what I'm most interested in hearing from Scoble is, you know, I first uh, met Scoble or was introduced to Scoble back in the Google Glass days when he was another um, <clears throat> glass fanatic, let's say. And I find it, you know, it's always interesting to me to see where paths diverge from there. For me, glass was, you know, the direct route to voice. And it seems like for so many other people, including Scoble, I think, Glass was the direct route to augmented reality. And it really is interesting to me that, that these seem to be two almost divergent paths. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of curious to hear his take on it. My take on voice in the metaverse is I, I'm actually pretty excited to see a voice in the metaverse, but I'm still really more interested in seeing voice in the actual universe. Um, I think there's so much potential, you know, and this, this may be one of the biggest differences between a lot of other technologies that we're dealing with right now, is they either very solidly live in one world or the other, and I think voice living in both can be really powerful. Um, it actually, some, and, and, and I say this partly because uh, my friend Noble and I have had parts of this debate before about uh, AR, VR versus voice. And our conclusion was they go great together. Um, an experiment I did, oh, it feels like a, a bunch of years ago now when I was, I was testing out a smart home system for Google is I created uh, synthetic devices for light in Minecraft. So I was able to turn lights on and off using, using my voice in Minecraft, which was cute and fun. And I learned a little bit about how to you know, build these devices. Um, but there's an interesting crossover between the two worlds. So thanks for that question, Janice. I'm really looking forward to, to seeing where, where oh, that conversation goes. Wonderful. Alan, and you know, this is such a rich area. You are right in vogue because right now platforms are, you know, delivering audiences for what you're describing. You were just ahead of your time, which is as might as well be wrong, you know, to be early. <laughs> but now you're in vogue, right? What do you, your time has come, Alan. You know, You're no longer a prisoner. That's, <laughs> we are all prisoners. Um, but it seems like that's the story of my career sometimes, is I'm about three steps ahead. And by the time the rest of the world uh, gets to the same place, I'm, I'm somewhere else. Now, I think we finally have Lee on as a speaker. So, Lee, let's get your question before we lose you again. Thanks so much, Janice. Perfect. Sorry. The, uh, the joys of internet in Indonesia at the moment. Um, yeah, I was going to ask, where in the world is Lee? It's, it's like a Carmen Sandiego, but with Lee. Uh, where are you now? Uh, Bali, Bali, Indonesia. 
Okay. Um, hopefully, <clears throat> a quick question, which is, if you, you know, we've all been in voice for quite some time, and if someone's coming in new, I get people asking me, like, you know, what's the voice space like at the moment? And I find it difficult to not necessarily excite them to come into it, but, you know, explain, like, what the new thing is that can excite them to make that leap. And I'm just intrigued on if you if you were asked a question by someone new, what what cool or interesting hook are you saying to them to kind of show them that there is still hope in this uh, yeah. in this space? That's actually a really good question, Lee. It's, it's I have a presentation on this that I've done now for a couple of college groups, and my broad answer kind of boils down to two things. The first is that we really need your skill in voice. There is, a lo- there is a lot of potential with voice, and we need more people exploring that in all of the different facets. One of the reasons I got into to teaching about it and talking about it is because I have so much that I want to do, and there's no way I can do it all, so we need the others. The second thing that I really like to point out is that any skills that you're learning, you know, whether you are learning web development, whether you are learning backend development, cloud development, Android development, machine learning, whether you're learning web design, everything that we are doing, every, every other field that we're learning about, security, privacy, you know, all of the stuff, everything has a corresponding place in voice. And the skills that you are learning now directly help you in that. You know, so if what you're learning now is front, building front ends in JavaScript and HTML, you know, and you might think, where does that apply in voice? Well, part of it is, is, is kind of as Mark pointed out before, more and more we want to put voice into those interfaces as well. Um, but also the skills that you're learning in JavaScript directly apply with some of the skills that we need to build for voice right now. We need the JavaScript expert. If you're used to learning how to design things, how to, to talk to people about designing things, conversation design doesn't seem like it a direct correspondence to graphical design, but it is. It's, you know, whereas before you would say things like, what's the mood you're trying to set with this color? What are the icons that you want? What are the graphics that you want? That still might be something that you ask because we're doing that with APL and HTML now, but it also has a direct audio correspondence. What is the mood that we're trying to set and how can we shape that with voice and audio? What are the icons that you want to use and what are the ear cons that are the corresponding bits? So there's a lot of things that, um, that are, are, are such in parallel that I hope people learn, you know, not, you know, so I, I can say to an Android developer now, look, sure, you can learn how to build for an Android phone and the screen on an Android phone and then take the skills that you have and with just a little more work, add voice to it. And that just explodes it into a brand new dimension. So I'm really excited about voice. I hope Others get that excitement as well. And I really hope that people who have not done voice and audio work see what, you know, that, that they can take what they're doing and just exponentially make it better by adding, by, by enhancing their skills, not replacing their skills, but enhancing them. That was a long, <laughs> that, that was a long monologue there, Mark. But what <clears throat> do you think? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I totally agree that there are people from different um, skill sets, um, you know, even non-technical skill sets that we need in this space. So, um, you know, it depends on who I'm talking to. If I'm talking to somebody who's not a developer but is still interested in voice, there are tools for creating interactive stories um, and, I, and I think that's a great way. If you want to, if you're a storyteller, or you want to, you know, tell your story or tell a story, uh, uh, whether it's you know political or cultural or you know international. If there's some story that you want to tell, there is a way to do it and make that interactive, which is something that you don't get um, 
with just an audio book. So I think um, th that's one area that I say, just, you know, figure out what story you want to tell and, and do an interactive uh, story using some of these tools that we have. Um, other than that, if you're more of a developer, I would say build something that you're going to use. What, what would you like to say to your device and have happen? And if that doesn't exist or doesn't exist in the way that you uh, think it should, um, then then create it. Um, and you know, if, if nothing else, then you get to use it and it's making your life better. But chances are, if it's something that you use on a regular basis, then somebody else is going to be interested in using that. Um, the third thing is, is I would say try, try doing games. Um, I, I've tried to do games in various platforms, whether it be Unity or... Game Maker, or I can't even remember all the other ones I've tried. Two D, I've even like tried to get into three D uh, design before, and it always seemed like there was you know, either monetary for the, the tools that I needed, or you know, just too big of a hurdle to do something. You know, I know that a lot of these games take dozens and dozens of people to to create, and if you're a one person just wanting to create a game. Voice was actually approachable for me. I could come up with a concept, um, adapt it for voice, and then go ahead and create that on my own and, and have the satisfaction of, of having a game that I can play and enjoy. Um, so those are the things that I would say to people that are getting started. And I think that's a great point, is that a lot of people, I think, might be intimidated by voice because they get the impression that it requires a lot of machine learning knowledge or a lot of artificial intelligence knowledge. And it's not necessary. You know, a lot of that hard work has been done for us. Yeah. So there's still a lot that we can do as programmers, that, that as developers we can do, that as designers we can do, as people with an idea that we can do without having to go to the, well, how do I train a language model? That part's not necessary. Yeah. And, and I think people need to understand that, you know, I, I think you put it really well, Mark, that voice is very approachable. It's far more approachable than I think people think. That, in a lot of ways, it's, it's, it's more approachable to me than web. And I've been doing web for a dozen years, right? You know, so I was actually going to say it feels a lot more approachable to me than mobile development, which seems like it's got a lot, you know, a lot of heavy... Uh, scaffolding that you need to have in place in order to, to produce yeah. just a hello world and simple stuff we can do a lot it feels like we can do it fair, easier in voice and maybe I'm biased but you know I remember when I jumped into voice it felt very easy and very natural to do yeah you know there, there are certainly things to learn but it didn't feel like it was I needed to relearn everything it was uh, I could get into it easily we had a bunch of reactions to that that all seemed pretty positive. So I, I, it sounds like the audience more or less agrees with us. I don't want to keep this too long since we know that our listeners kind of tune out after a while. So uh, I want to thank all of, all of you who have joined us here today for, for listening in. Uh, thank those of you who have asked questions. And like I said, I, I encourage people to, to come and ask us questions. You can find us on Twitter, on LinkedIn, in Voice Lunch, because you know, we're only 75 episodes in. Um, there's a lot more that I hope that we, we get to talk about. And when we do, uh, we hope you will join us for another episode of Two Voice Devs. Two Voice Devs. Take care, Alan. You too. Have a happy new year, Mark. Yeah, thank and you. Thank and you thanks, again. everybody, for joining. Yep. Thanks, everyone, for joining.